let's go over to Stortebron. But on Stortebron is huge. Uh, I don't even know how huge they are. I know, but it's not only insurance, right? It's also the financial side that that Stortebron is responsible for. And Stortebron isn't only very much entrenched in Norway. It's obviously very Nordic, uh, additionally. So it's really interesting to hear more from Stina. Uh, Stina Billinger is the head of sustainability at Stortebron, and she's going to talk about the Swedish initiative. That's all I've been allowed to say. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so until about three weeks ago, I was head of corporate responsibility for Storebrand. Uh, but what happened was that I wrote a chronicle in a Norwegian newspaper arguing that we should um, redefine corporate responsibility. Uh, basically what I wrote was that kind of screw corporate responsibility, welcome corporate rebel. And then a week later, when I came to my Norwegian office, to my desk in Oslo, I had a, a card, a handwritten card there and a, and a box. And, and I opened the envelope and, in, and that was a card. And, and on that card, uh, it was from our CEO, Ode Arild Grefstad. Uh, and I don't often get handwritten cards from the CEO. And it said, Stina, I like the Chronicle, so I changed your title and I printed new business cards. So I now work as corporate rebel in Storebrand. Um, and you can, we can change business cards afterwards if you want to. <laughs> Almost 10 years ago, the clothing company Patagonia published an ad in New York Times with a picture of one of their jackets uh, saying, don't buy this jacket. And then with smaller letters, unless you really need it. That ad became an historic one, and it was brave enough to speak out and say the truth, and also it addressed one of the most problematic issues for creating a sustainable development and building a better future, which is mass consumption, often used to create happiness and satisfaction, you know, shopping to get happy, not to, instead of covering kind of basic needs. So by then, I worked in the advertising industry, and, and the ad really started something in me. It really impressed me. And last year, I saw another ad that almost moved me and impressed me as much as the Patagonia ad. It was a big billboard outside the street of Stockholm School of Economics saying, don't work for these companies. And then in smaller letters, if you are a woman and you want to have a career. Uh, and then, sadly enough, it was a list of almost 100 Swedish companies, all of them listed at the Stockholm Stock Exchange, and all of them with 0% female managers in executive management. The originator was, of course, not the companies themselves. It was the Foundation Albright, uh, working to get more female executives in the Swedish business society. But the response of the ad was huge. I don't think any student left the building without taking a photo and posted it in social media. It was obviously bad PR for the companies. It was bad for their employer branding, but it was very good for the discourse in the Swedish society. I'll come back to that. So recently, PwC conducted a survey amongst European, a bunch of European CEOs, asking them, what are the biggest threats for future growth in your companies, the biggest risks and threats. And being a sustainability nerd, I would, I mean, I would guess that they answered climate change, or maybe human rights issues, or maybe ecosystem services collapse, or corruption, of course, but they didn't. Uh, and moving outside from the sustainability agenda, I would um, guess financial crisis. No. Euro crisis, no. You know, the right answer is the risk of not winning the competition for the best competence. Some people even call it the war on talent. And that's what keeps European CEOs awake at night. So given that the biggest challenge for companies is finding the right competence, for me it's a mystery that diversity is not higher up on the agenda for business leaders, not in Sweden and not in Norway. It's a mystery that we still have issues with explaining why this is important in the business community. And it's a mystery that finding female talents from all cultures and countries and make them stay and grow in the company is not a top, top, top priority for all CEOs in Scandinavia and in Europe. Almost no CEO states 
that not promoting female executives, enough woman, women to executive positions, hinders growth, profitability, and consumer satisfaction. Uh, but I'm not here to complain. I'm here to tell you that something has happened in the Swedish business community and the discourse has changed. We now have Battle of the Numbers. Battle of the Numbers is a project launched by three women from three different generations working with diversity issues in the Swedish business society, but from different perspectives. These three women understood that it takes something else than just another mentorship program to really get this going uh, and to stimulate women to reach higher positions. It takes CEO commitment. And to put it frankly, the issue is not about women being unwilling to take higher positions. Rather, it's lack, about lack of processes and systems to actually detect the right competence and, and uh, about those holding these positions, mostly but, but not al always men, not seeding the way for talented women. So Battle of the Numbers invited the CEOs of a number of large Swedish corporations saying that if you are willing to commit, we have a recipe for facilitating processes and promote talented women. Ten of them said yes. Nine of nine Swedish companies, and some of the biggest companies in Sweden, like Ericsson, IKEA, H&M, Volvo, Sandvik, SAB, and one Norwegian company, Store Brand, with its Swedish subsidiary SPP. And all of us, we had fancy policy documents in place, all of us, but all of us with unacceptably low levels of women in female executive positions. So we have decided to do something about this problem and to put gender equality on the agenda and change the gender balance in the executive positions. And the, the method uh, is used, the Women West method. And it has a good track record and Women West is a very well-known and respected consultancy firm. So all the companies has designated 10 women each to work together during one year to find implementable and simple actions and I happen to be one of these women, and therefore I choose to be here today and talk about this. So what we do is not rocket science, it's very hands-on and action-oriented, but it's unique as it not has been done in the Swedish business society before. Uh, so we discussed what has worked for me and what has not worked for me. What has worked for me on a personal level, on a private level, and on a professional level. We discussed what um, what initiatives and system is in place in the company to date, and what seems to work. What has brought me to the position that I am today, and what is required for me to take the next step. So after two days of workshop, 100 women go back, we go back to our executive management team and discuss and refine the proposals we have formulated jointly. And the coolest thing with this is that we're not discussing actions that can bear fruit in like five years time. The actions that we are asked to propose to our management team should be implementable within a 6 to 12 month time and it should show immediate result. And we are now halfway through the program and in November we are asked to present our proposed actions and that meeting will comprise 100 managers, female managers of these companies and the management, the executive management of 10 of the Swedish biggest companies. And for Storebrand, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that this program will help us, although we are not starting from scratch, not at all. 40% of our managers are female, but how many at the top? What do you think? Only 20. So our biggest challenge is to develop the infrastructure and actually finding the tools to getting women to say yes to higher positions. Um, it is also well known that the financial industry is conservative and it's really not the, the sector that are known for putting soft issues like sustainability and, and diversity and, 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 and um, gender issues on top of the agenda. But the financial industry is also in desperate need to refine its purpose and its objective. It is clear that financial services again need to serve society instead of society serving the interest of the financial industry. And to be able to accomplish that, we need a new type of leadership. And not only in the financial industry, we need it in the whole society. And London Business School recently published 
research about the most important responsibility for leaders. At the top, yes, maximizing profits, of course. But equally important is four bullets, and I'll give you it now. It's one, creating a responsible corporate culture. Two, demonstrating integrity and ethical leadership. Three, contributing to long-term sustainability. And four, involving and engaging employees. And guess what? I'm absolutely sure that those managers are to be found both among women and men. And with the risk of making an understatement, some of these features are not often associated with the kind of male leader stereotype. Um, so tapping the potential in diversity, a company's ability to recruit, to keep, and to invest in female talents is absolute key. And the battle of the numbers has started in the Swedish Business Society, and I hereby invite the Norwegian Business Society to join the battle. Thank you. Thank you, Stina. I love that corporate rebel. That is, that is too amazing. Yeah, but but in a sense, you know, I know a lot of guys in you know Akerbrega and over there, and, and yeah, we moved to Lusaka. Okay, just to get away from them. Okay, maybe maybe it'll help. But um, do you really think you can make a difference at the top in this uh, battle for the numbers? I know you're the rebel, but I yeah, yeah I, I'm at the top. Well, well, so I, obviously I, mean, I can make a difference there. No, but, but what do you really think will be sort of the, the results in November when you're presenting? Do, do you really think you'll, you'll start met metrics, performance yeah. uh, reviews? I, I think it's a combination of, of, of uh, metrics and actually getting the, the, the CEO commitment in saying that we want to have 40, 50% women at the top. Yeah. Uh, and then it's a question of attitude. Mm. Mm. And, and that attitude is to be changed. I mean, obviously, attitude training is really important in executive management team, discussing diversity. But attitude training is also very important for young female talents. I mean, we have to be trained to say yes. Yeah. And, and I, got, I got my job in Norway when I had a four-month baby. And I was on maternity leave. And it wasn't very easy to say yes to a, to a job commuting to, to Norway and spending at least one or two nights away from my baby. But I did, and I wouldn't do that if I wasn't trained by other female and male kind of mentors to, to dare to say yes and to dare to kind of shape my own role and my own mm. uh, ability. Mm. But uh, you also said another thing that I thought was interesting is is trying to make this uh, battle of the numbers more than just a mentor program because mentor programs are so popular. Everybody yeah. starts with me, you know, and I, I want to start. And we have mentoring. thousands already, and, and obviously and, and they haven't made the job. Yeah, but but aside from uh, you know having really the CEO commitment and awareness training, what else needs to be done? Um, management rotation is a very very important one. That's so important. kind of finding ways to uh, stimulate and to 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 get ways to, 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 to reach, have different, yeah, different yeah, to jobs, reach job in uh, yeah. a natural management rotation. Mm -hmm. that, that is something that we discuss a lot. Yeah. Another thing that we, amongst the 100 women, discuss a lot is exporting bonus. Getting a bonus each time you export a talent from your team up in the system. Ah, okay. And that's that that, that kind that of forces like that. you not to hold your talents oh. really you know, close to your body because that's really a problem for leaders. I mean, if they found one super dedicated, delivering young woman. They're not going to let her go. They're Very not going to let her go. I like that. Export mm -hmm. bonus. Export mm -hmm. bonus. It comes from H&M or Ikea, some of them. Figures it's Swedish. Mm -hmm. so. um, uh, two questions. Do I have enough time for two questions? Uh, because you're also responsible for um, uh, the, you know, the, the sustainable portfolio uh, of, of investments. Money. Yes, a lot of money. But is diversity a consideration in there? Are you able to bake it in? Is it a part of sort of the criteria that you look at when making sustainable investments? Yeah, both equality and diversity, it, I mean, we consider it in the sector analysis uh, from different perspectives, uh, analyzing the, the, the governance structure, obviously, it's, it's one of the indicators of, of, of good governance, working with diversity. And, and since we know from, from science that, that 
that it has a, of an impact of on bottom line. So we have to <laughs> consider it when we're analyzing companies. Uh, but also the aspect of, the, I mean, the other social aspects of diversity in the society, like financial inclusion, is one example of, of, of indicators that, that are really important when we're doing the sustainability analysis. Mm. Very good. I want to talk to you more about that at, at another time. Um, last question that everybody yeah. gets again. What advice would you give other companies on where to start on their diversity journey? I decided to change because my answer was the same as Colin. Yeah, so you have uh, to have so something different. Yeah, yeah, so I decided to reframe the question. Okay, and go ahead. What advice, you rebel. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would I give to a woman being in a company feeling that they don't have top management CEO commitment? Okay. And I would say change job yeah. immediately. That's a good one. Don't work at those companies. Mm -hmm. And be really sure to ask the CEO and the executive management team, do I, do I have a chance here? And if you don't, just change jobs. Mm. I like it, sort of to make it like the interviewer's question to the, uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the company you, you have to, at, at You have to pick stage. a company and pick your boss. That's, that's almost, I mean, choosing your boss is almost as important as choosing your partner. Well said, well said. Thank you, Stila.